Hello YouTube, today I'm going to install a water filtration system in my kitchen sink and I've already taken out all the contents from its box, laid them out on the ground here for you guys to see. It came with this one additional year warranty if you register form. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out after I make this video. It also came with this really cool one page uh, instruction overview of how to install the whole thing in a nice one picture format like this. Just by looking at this, you'll get a very good idea of what needs to be done to get this filter system running. This is the system head with pre-installed RO membrane. And down here, you'll be installing these pre-filters. These are the casings and within each casing is the appropriate filter media that it comes with already wrapped so it stays clean. These three will get installed down here. Here's the storage tank. This is where your clean water will be stored for you to use once it's filtered. This is a four gallon tank. Here's the included faucet that it came with. It comes with all the washers and nuts. You'll need to install this on the top of your sink. This here is the valve that you're going to use to feed water into the system. This is going to, the water is going to come from your cold water outlet. This here is called the drain saddle. You're going to be using this to poke a hole into your uh, outgoing water line so that dirty water can drain out of the system. Here we have uh, some tubing. They also included Teflon tape and this is called a ball valve that's going to go on top of that tank. They have also included these wrenches. You're going to need these to untighten the filter housings. This one here will untighten this one here. All right, we're going to start with the filter housings and the pre-filter that's already inside. We're going to set this up first. Just the second stage, pre-filter. Again, the O-rings out of place, just sort of guide it into place. And the third one is the same exact carbon filter. The O-ring, make sure you guys take papers and stuff like that that they've included out of there. This one has it too. Each one had a piece of paper in it. I need to unwrap this. Here's the first stage, second stage, and third stage. We're going to go ahead and tighten them onto the correct positions on the head. For now I'm just going to hand tighten it. Alright, so I'm going to use the included wrench here to now tighten them completely onto the head. I flipped it upside down to make it easier on myself. You wanna get a nice good grip on it. Tighten as much as you can with the wrench. And the last one. Remember, make sure the O-rings are in the right place before you start tightening. So before I continue with assembling the whole system, I wanted to kind of show you guys this important information here. You guys need to make sure you have an extra hole for the faucet that's included. This faucet needs to go on your sink, uh, on the sink somewhere. Uh, so this here is a hole for the 
dish soap dispenser. But since we're not using it, we have it as an extra hole for this faucet. If you guys don't have a hole like this, you're gonna need to drill one out or have a professional create one for you guys. Because without that, this whole system is just not gonna work. Now before we continue, uh, I wanted to kind of make sure that the system's gonna fit underneath my sink here. Um, you guys are gonna have to clear out space for it. It does take a lot of space. And once you've cleared out enough space, I recommend highly that you guys measure this area even before buying this. We, we did measure it before buying it, so I'm fairly confident ours is gonna fit. This tank came with this little plastic legs. Really awesome. You can put it somewhere. Put the tank on, onto it. I'm gonna push the tank as far back as I can. There we go. And then also you're gonna need space for the head and the pre-filters. This doesn't need to be screwed into anything. It could just sit on the pre-filter capsules, or I should say the enclosures, like that. So the next part is to install the valve to get the cold water into the system. Now, underneath the sink, you're gonna find two different valves. You're gonna find the cold and hot water valves. Now, you might not know which one's cold, which one's hot. One way to find out which one's cold and hot is to turn on the hot water and let it run for a little while, and then feel around the valve and the piping of each of these. The one that is the hot water will actually get warm to the touch. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're gonna let the water run like this for a little while so that the pipes start getting hot. Because when the wa hot water is running, initially the pipe isn't hot until enough water goes through it to make it warm or hot. So once it's run enough like this, you don't need to turn it off. Uh, what you wanna do is as it's running, get down here underneath the sink and feel around the pipes. If there's hot water coming out, that means the pipe will be warm and I'm feeling both the left and the right side pipe here. It might be different for you, but for me, I could feel that this pipe here is getting really warm. So this is my hot water outlet, and that one there is my cold water. So we're gonna connect the, the filter system to the cold water one here for mine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this part here, the needle valve, to the main uh, body or the adapter that will connect to our cold water supply line. So we're gonna use the included Teflon tape to go ahead and wrap it around the valve here. Uh, take a little bit like that. All right, so for our adapt or for our cold water supply, we're gonna need to use the uh, 4C38 connection. You can use either a half connection or you can use a 38 connection. We're gonna go ahead and use the 38 connection. So what we're gonna do is install this rubber O-ring all the way down. Make sure it's all the way in. And we're gonna take this, you don't need Teflon tape for this. You're just gonna screw it in like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two wrenches. And tighten it that way. I'm gonna use the big wrench for the adapter body. This wrench here. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and snug. I don't need to over tighten this. The rubber inside is gonna do the job of not letting the water out. So you just gotta make sure it's nice and snug. So now we're ready to install this underneath the sink. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off first. Here you'll have a valve to shut off the cold water from coming out. So you're gonna twist it clockwise like that until it stops. So now this thing is turned off. You might still get water to dripping down because uh, there's still water trapped in the line here. So what you wanna do is you wanna put a piece of cloth under you so that it doesn't get wet down there. So what we're gonna do is take out this line here. 
from right at this point. I'm going to adjust my wrench to fit it and slowly twist it off, just like that. There you go. Now that that's free, we can go ahead and insert our adapter. All right, sorry guys that we don't have ample lighting down here, but I'm just working with what I've got. So the O-ring's in place. I'm gonna flip it over without dropping the O-ring. There you go. And we're just gonna tighten it into place here by hand. Just like that. I'm gonna try to tighten it by hand as much as I can. There you go. And then if I need, if you guys need, you could uh, go ahead and tighten it some more with the wrench. I think I'll go ahead and tighten it just a tad bit more with the wrench. There you go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it onto the other end of this adapter. Just like that by hand first. And then I'm gonna use my adjustable wrench to tighten it a little bit more. You don't wanna over tighten this, but just make it snug. Because of the O-ring inside will take care of the water leaking so that it doesn't leak. Uh, it's gonna tighten it and it's gonna provide a seal so the water doesn't come out. So that's pretty much it. So we're done with this par part of the process. All right, for the next step, uh, I'm going to install the drain saddle. Now, in the instructions, it says to install the drain saddle somewhere before the trap. So it can't be after this trap. So we can't install it anywhere here. It has to be above this trap. The water gets trapped in the trap, of course, and it gets trapped up to the point where it comes out. So right now, anywhere below this point, there's water in there. So we cannot install it anywhere even here because this is below this point. So it needs to be above that. So we have no choice other than to install it here, I think is the best place for us. Now you guys have to look at your own piping system and inspect and figure out a good place to install it. But for my system, the best place to install it is here for me. So we're going to need to drill a hole, a 1 4 inch uh, hole for the black drain tubing. And uh, I've got my drill here and drill bits. And I'm going to go ahead and take a 1 4 inch right here. That's what we're going to need to drill. By the way, if you guys need any of these tools, the drill bits or the drill itself or anything like that, I have some links in the description of this video to the exact tools I'm using, just in case you guys are curious or you need any of these things. Here's the black tubing that I'm drilling the hole for. Um, if you guys are, are unsure what size drill bit you need, what you can do is you can also measure right up against that tubing. It has to be the exact diameter of this tubing when you're gonna drill a hole. So that is a one fourth inch tubing. Another tip I could give you guys is before you start drilling any holes or anything, take the drain saddle that's included and actually wrap it around the pipe that you're planning to drill just to make sure that it's the right diameter for this drain saddle. So I wrapped it around this pipe and I can see that it's going to fit perfectly. But for example, if you guys have a thicker pipe somewhere along your system, along your line in your system, like right here, for example, this is not gonna fit around it. This is way too big of a diameter. So make sure before you drill any holes that you're gonna be able to wrap this around the pipe that you're drilling a hole into and make sure while you're drilling that you're taking your time 
you don't want to drill too fast you might end up messing up your piping just take your time don't let it slip of course don't push too hard you might end up damaging the other side of the pipe once it goes through There you go, and we're in. Let's go ahead and clean around the edges here. There we go. All right, once you got your hole drilled there, they include a, a small sticker or it's padding, looks like this. And take the whole, the center part out, the hole like that and the other side has a sticky back you're gonna rip that off like that and center the whole thing right over the hole you drilled and stick it on just like that All right, so to install the drain clamp part, you have to do it directly over the hole you drilled. So these two holes need to line up. And so what I'm gonna do in, to make it exact is I have the filterer system right next to me and I took the black uh, tubing that's supposed to go through into that hole. I'm gonna go ahead and actually pass it through now. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the clamp system here all the way through so that's sticking out from the other side and so that's going to be able to that's going to give me a feel for where that hole is because it's going to line up directly with it there so now we know exactly how to clamp that on i'm going to go ahead and do that now i'm going to put the bolts into the sides one on the left and another bolt on the right and it came with a couple of nuts like that I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten those into the place one on the right I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the left All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use my adjustable wrench to hold the nut in the back. Like that. While I tighten the bolt in the front. All right, so the next step is I'm going to assemble the faucet out here to give you guys a good idea of how you're going to put it together. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it together underneath the sink. So first step is putting this in. Here's a nice illustration and the instructions showing exactly how you're gonna put all of this in place. So the first thing is gonna be the faucet base that's going to go in like that and connect to the faucet that way immediately underneath the faucet base is where your counter is going to be and underneath the counter is going to be this part it's like a plastic ring that's going to go and it's going to go between the base the counter and that's going to be underneath. After that is going to be this lock washer. You're going to go ahead and send that through the tubing. It's going to come up like that. And then finally you're going to use this nut, lock nut, and you're going to lock it all into place. 
this lock nut's going to tighten on to the shaft here all the way down um, until it presses right up against the lock washer and the whole thing locks into place all right i'm gonna go ahead and send the tubing down the faucet hole just like that that's the base and the rest of the faucet gonna sit on top like that make sure around this hole is nice and clean so that water doesn't sip through and we're gonna continue the rest of it below the sink all right so I went ahead and went down there and uh, put the locking nut in place and this thing is nice and tight up here this still rotates nice and easy and that's how you turn it on and off all right next step while I have the filter out here I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this this part that's protecting the the output there and I'm gonna connect the clear line that's coming down from the faucet above that we just installed into here by pushing it in all right so we have the the black tubing connected the clear tubing connected and at this point I'm ready to go ahead and put this whole thing underneath the sink in the cabinet here remember that up to this point you're you haven't had turned you haven't turned the water back on yet uh, the valve it's still turned off don't turn it on until the whole thing is installed and ready to go there we go now before we put this tank into the cabinet we're gonna go ahead and install the ball valve so we're gonna give it about six to seven wraps of Teflon rest of the way I'm going to use a wrench once again you guys if you guys need any of these tools or like to have the exact ones I have I'll link uh, the description in the description of this video will have links to all the tools I'm, I'm using as well as this whole filter system so you guys can buy the exact same one if you want So the tank is going to connect to this point here, this connection point. What you want to do is take this protective plug out by pushing this part in and gently pulling that up and out of there, just like that. And we're going to connect the yellow line to it, just like that, by pushing it in. And the other end, we'll go ahead and go into here. Just like that make sure you push it in nice and tight it has to go all the way in so the last thing we're going to connect is this red tubing again there's this protective part there you're going to push in this portion and pull out this thing that's just there to protect the opening there and then now we're going to insert the red tube like that. Okay, and then position it. So we're gonna take this part out here and we're gonna use this. We're gonna put this through first. Put the white part in as well, like that. And then we're gonna stick the rest of it that way. And 
I'm going to push the red tubing in as far as I can and then tighten it into place. You're going to try to get it nice and tight with your hands and then get an adjustable wrench. And this is a compression nut so it's going to compress the line so that it seals it. Try to go in as far as you can without over tightening it. If you feel like you're going to strip it or break it, you should stop tightening it. That's it. I believe that's tight enough. <clears throat> Next step, we're going to turn the water on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the main water. There's the valve down here, if you point down. There's the valve right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. And if everything's fine, we're not going to get water bursting out of this thing. There you go. There's a bit of a leak there. I saw leaking occurring here as well, where the valve and the adapter met with the Teflon tape. I hadn't tightened it uh, tight enough and it was leaking. So as it was leaking, it wasn't leaking so fast. It was just a slight leak. As it was going, I went ahead and tightened it until the leaking stopped. All right, so at this point we're done. Once you've checked to make sure that there's no leaking uh, from any of these joints all around, just look around the whole system, make sure there's no leaking. If there's leaking, take care of it by tightening that point that's leaking. And once you're all done with all of that, uh, turn off the faucet at the top and let the tank fill up. You're not supposed to use the first tank of water. That's dirty water and you're supposed to flush it out. So it takes about two to three hours for this tank to fill up fully. So go do something else, you know, and come back in two to three hours. Turn the faucet back on. It'll take about five minutes for all of that tank water to drain out of that faucet. You might see dirty water come out or you might see uh, just loose activated carbon activated filter particles coming out as well. So let all of that drain out. It takes about five minutes. And then once that's done, the second tank of water is ready for you to use. It is now the next day. I've allowed the tank to fill in for the whole night. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it now. The full tank is going to drain. It will take about five minutes to drain the whole tank. It's been about two weeks or so since I've installed this water system. I've been using it and it's been working just fine. Uh, it the tank the four gallon tank hasn't ever run out since I've been using it you don't use it often enough for the water to run out so it's really good and yeah it's nice clean water and it's always there when you need it so it's very convenient I definitely enjoy having it um, in about a week or so I'm going to go ahead and test the water between the tap water and the clean water I'm going to test it with the water tester to see what the results look like if you guys want to see that video, please subscribe and stay in tune. And that will be my very next video after this one. Um, and thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and leave comments if you have any questions. Uh, I'll definitely answer them. And don't forget to check out the links in the description of this video if you guys are interested in this water system or any of the tools I used. And thank you very much. See you guys later.